Hello everyone, my name is Mark Peralavis. I'm running for school board trustee position in wards one and five in the city of Guelph. And I just thought I would update you on what I've been up to during this campaign. Of course, I've been out door knocking and talking to people, including people teachers in schools, as well as students, pupils, other people who are involved in the education system in our city. And one of the things that I noticed on September 6th was that the Superintendent of Equity and Inclusion, which is a very high management position within the board, this is the top brass of the board are the superintendents and the directors of education. So the Superintendent of Equity and Inclusivity or Inclusion is supposed to be setting an example for the rest of the staff. While I was on Twitter, I noticed that the Superintendent of Equity and Inclusion tweeted out this tweet, which included the words of the tweet, which said, happy hashtag first day of school to all students, staff, and families. And the image that was included in the tweet included a notebook that has the hashtag black excellence. And I thought to myself, that seems like a violation of the board's written policies. And so I've spent the last, since September 6th until now, trying to solve this issue because I believe that this tweet violates the board's written policies. And I'll show you why I think that. So here's the board's inclusivity and equity policy. The equity and inclusive education policy is number 504. I've got the link in the description. You can go check it out for yourself. This is the overview page. This is the website page that links to the PDF of the manual and the PDF of the policy statement. We're going to look at the manual for this presentation. So the board states repeatedly that racism is not tolerated. And so if you would be correct to make sure that we need to make sure we're talking about the same thing when we say racism. So let's find how the board defines racism. They do so within this policy document. So this is the Equity and Inclusive Education Procedures Manual 504A, and this is dated October 10th, excuse me, October 2010, um, and updated February 2022. Revision history, February 2011, May 2016, February 2022. And the next review is scheduled for 2026-2027 for school year. So this is reviewed, current, and approved. Okay, so we're all on the same page. Let's scroll down to the first definition I want to look at. And the first definition, you can read all of them. Please do. You can take your time and read all of them. I certainly have. I've gone through this a few times. The definition of racism, according to the Upper Grand District School Board, is referring to ideas or practices that establish, maintain, or perpetuate the racial superiority or dominance of one group over another. Okay, I just want to look at the tweet one more time. Black excellence. Is that a racial hashtag? I would think that it is a racial hashtag. Is it promoting superiority or dominance? Black excellence. Okay, let's just do this thought process. If white excellence or Asian excellence or brown excellence were on that notebook, would it be acceptable? I asked the director of education if any of those things would be acceptable. And he hummed and hawed at brown excellence or Asian excellence saying that a case might be made. But he said, absolutely not. White excellence would be not acceptable. And that tweet would be pulled down. But the black excellence tweet would not be pulled down. This is a racial, racially charged tweet that violates the written policy of the board. And bringing this to the board's attention should trigger a review or some kind of ability to have a conversation that would result in understanding the board's position but it hasn't. And I've used the public concerns policy, which I'll show you before we, we finish this. So let's keep in mind that basically the uh, racism is defined by the board as ideas or practices that establish, maintain, or perpetuate the racial superiority holding one group above another or dominance, one group above another of one group over another. Okay. Black excellence. One of my problems with this is Black excellence doesn't include all of the students in, in the school. It, it excludes Asian students. It, it excludes Indian students. It excludes indigenous students. It excludes white students. It excludes everybody but black students. This is a violation on multiple levels. And nobody's willing to even engage with me on this. If they engage with me, they say that it doesn't violate their, their policies. Let's look at their policies. Okay. Number three. So after all of the definitions are done, now we get into the meat and the potatoes of the policy. The policy says details. Uh, procedures are organized below to the board's eight guiding principles. 
3.1. It says, incorporate the principles of equity, anti-racism, and anti-oppression into every aspect of the board's operation. Okay, so they want to make sure that this is happening at every level of the board. It says, it is the board's responsibility it is the responsibility, excuse me, of all Upper Grand District School Board staff to 3.1.1, act and engage to change racist and oppressive policies within all areas of the board. And 3.1.1 says, from an equity stance, review and revise all board policies in order to disrupt those that perpetuate individual or systemic racism and oppression. We'll look at systemic racism in just a second. But if somebody sees a race racism, the board is supposed to, according to their policy, engage to change racist and oppressive practices within all areas of the board. If your superintendent of equity is tweeting out a racially charged hashtag that puts one race above other races, how is that not violating 3.1 and 3.1.1 of this policy? I'd like to understand how. Further, let's carry on. I have, I have more questions that I would like answered. In 3.2, it says, establish and support diverse leadership that is committed to identifying, describing, and dismantling bias, oppression, and racism in all of its forms. It doesn't say in some of its forms. It doesn't say in some forms that are approved by the Human Rights um, Count Tribunal of Ontario. It doesn't say... At some, at, at some points, we will tweet racially divisive or racially charged hashtags. Please see this writer about what's going on there. It doesn't say anything about that. It says it is going to dismantle racism, uh, oppression and racism in all of its forms. I want to look at the definition of racism again because I think it's really important. It refers to ideas or practices that establish, maintain, or perpetuate the racial superiority or dominance of one group over another. So how can black excellence be not be something that is not triggering this, but white excellence is something that triggers this, is something that would be seen as unacceptable and, and a violation of this policy. What do these policy words mean if they don't mean all? Where can I understand what these policy words mean if upon reading them and seeing the practices of the board, those things are, mismanaged, are, are mismatched? How can I understand it if the board is not willing to explain it? I don't understand. In 3.2.1, it says, it is the responsibility of the director of education and all superintendents and managers and supervisors to identify, dismantle, and disrupt oppressive and racist practices in all forms, in all areas of the UGDSB. Is the communication from a senior superintendent of equity and inclusion communication that should be covered by this policy? Why isn't it? Can somebody please explain it to me? In uh, further, three okay, 3.2.1, I've done that one already. Uh, 3.5, let's scroll down to 3.5. There's a couple of things here that aren't pertinent to what we need to talk about, but 3.5 is pertinent, um, so we'll go down there. And so here's 3.5, it says, the board must create and uphold a safe, respectful, and positive school board culture and environment that is free from trauma, bias, stereotyping, oppression, and racism. And again, if we look at the board's definition of racism, if they're saying that they're going to have a board that is free from these things, free from racism, how is this tweet not violating this policy? I don't understand. Why can't the board explain it to me? 3.5.1 says, create a culture and environment that provides safe and inclusive access for all people. For all people. Does that mean some people sometimes? Right? I just, I'm not sure. Um, 3.5.2 says, communicate the shared responsibility of all students, staff, parents, guardians, and community members in creating a respectful, inclusive, positive school board, board culture and environment. Does tweeting out racially charged hashtags do those things? Does that not violate this policy? Why not? Who gets to govern that? Uh, 3.5.2.2 says all students, staff, parents, guardians, and community members will use inclusive and respectful language and approaches in all interactions following the UGDSB's dis discriminatory, excuse me, and harmful language protocol. I couldn't find the discriminatory and harmful language protocol. But if all interactions need to be inclusive and respectful, using inclusive and respectful language, how does this tweet not violate this policy. I don't understand. And I don't understand why nobody is willing to explain it to me. I am not being divisive or angry or anything in asking these things. Um, I'm merely trying to understand how a board that claims over and over again that they must be inclusive to everyone 
all the time, period. And they have calls to action in multiple policy sections of their document can sit there and not act when a blatant demonstration of racism is tweeted out by their own superintendent of inclusive inclusion and equity. And the board says that doesn't violate these policies and they won't explain their position. Here's the definition of systemic racism, according to the board, consists of organizational culture, policies, directives, practices, or procedures that exclude, displace, or marginalize some racialized groups or create unfair barriers for them to access valuable benefits and opportunities. This is often the result of institutional bias in organizational culture, policies, directives, practices, and procedures that may appear neutral but have the effect of privileging some groups and disadvantaging others. Could the Upper Grand District School Board understand how a message that is meant for all families and all students and staff having the image of a black excellence seems to be a violation of this policy and seems to be a violation of the definition of racism and the definition of systemic racism? Do white people or anybody who is not black count? How can I understand how these policies apply? If these policies don't apply to this tweet, what do they apply to? How can I understand? Where can I read about it? Why don't these people have any responsibility to help a parent understand? Because in the capacity that I'm trying to solve this problem, I am a parent. If you're interested in trying to deal with the Upper Grand District School Board or ask questions of the Upper Grand District School Board, you, there is a public concerns policy. Here is the public concerns policy. You can find the link in the description below. And um, when you go through the public concerns policy, first, if it's an issue with your kid's class or something to that effect, um, then you should, they go through definitions here as well, then you should review the situation with your child's teacher. This is steps for addressing your concerns. Um, first, go and deal with the issue with your child's teacher. If that doesn't fix it, then you go to the principal. If that doesn't fix it, then you go to a superintendent. Okay, I started at a superintendent, but he was apparently standing in for the director of education. Then I spoke with the director of education. We had a lovely conversation. I asked him if he could understand how the racially charged hashtag black excellence could be seen as racially charged the same way he viewed the hashtag white excellence as racially charged and why I asked him very clearly why this policy doesn't apply to this. And he said, it just doesn't. And he's not willing to get into further discussion because he thought I was being, I can't remember his exact words, but I could check the recording. Um, step five is register as, as a delegation and present to trustees. So I'll be presenting to trustees on October 18th. I'll basically be asking this question, what is not violating the policy here and what constitutes these definitions if that doesn't if that is not um if, if that does not fulfill these definitions if this tweet does not fulfill these definitions could you give me examples of which tweets do and how are we using this racially charged language within communications when your 3.5.2.2 states that all language um, is to be inclusive and respectful when dealing in all interactions following the UGDSB's discriminatory and harmful language protocol. I would like an explanation and I would like one that actually makes some kind of sense. When I, when I talked to the Guelph today about this, this is the article that they published about me. They said candidates behaving badly. Some would say so. They have uh, an expert from the University of Guelph. The University of Guelph let the communist candidate in 2019 come and address their students, but they wouldn't have let me from the PPC. So isn't that weird? Um, however, they have a quote from the director of education and the current board chair. And this is what they say. The current board chair, this is Linda Busatil. She's running for Ward 4 in Guelph. Don't vote for her. She's not a very good candidate. She's ignored me for years. Hi, Linda. Hope you're having fun watching my show. Um, she says, quote, we are currently living in a challenging time where division, hatred, and xenophobia are being actively promoted by a small number of loud voices. Board Chair Linda Busatil and Director Director of Education Peter Silverin said in an emailed statement, as members of our wider communities and as, educated, as an educational system, we are committed to actively work for the elimination of racism, hatred, and oppression. As an educational community, we have a responsibility to identify and describe racism and oppression and then work to dismantle it. The Upper Grand District School Board is committed to disrupting systemic racism and oppression in all its forms. Just not this form. Just not black excellence from their superintendent of equity and inclusion. Why not? Please explain to me, Upper Grand District School Board, why this tweet is not rising to that level to violate your written policies, and then explain to me how, the, how these written policies get applied, and which races do 
violate these policies. Because it feels to me that you say all, but you don't mean all. And I think that's wrong. We have a responsibility to every single child in Upper Grand District School Board to deliver the best education they can possibly manage, to help each child reach their potential. And each child's potential is different. You cannot have um, equality of outcome. You can only have equality of opportunity. You can only say, here you go, make with it what you can. And sometimes people will make wonderful things and sometimes they will do what they can and be successful. And we need to celebrate that and we need to get the focus off of skin color and we need to start focusing on helping our children learn how to read and write and do math and are, think critically. This idea that racism and all of this is acceptable is not okay. Racism is not acceptable. It is not acceptable from the board. It is not acceptable from teachers. It is not acceptable from directors of education or boards of education or boards of trustees. And it is not acceptable from superintendents. And we need to get this nonsense out of our education system as soon as possible. That's enough out of me for today, but thank you for watching. Um, you can find other video updates from me, which I will be posting before the end of this campaign. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again. Make sure to vote for Mark Peralavis on October 24th for Ward 1 and 5. And there are a bunch of other candidates who are fighting for your children to make sure that we get the identity politics out of our education system. Thanks for watching, everybody.